Hi Dragonflies, welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. This is once again the mobile edition of Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm working in a small space in my van, so we're going to do another postcard paint along. These little paint alongs are suitable for a beginner. If you've never painted with watercolor before, you'll be able to do this. But even if you're an experienced watercolor painter, you may pick up a trick or two from each of these postcards that you can take away and use in a larger, more complex painting. So I hope there'll be a little something for everyone and it'll be fun and easy. And in a very short period of time, you'll have several postcards that you can pop in the mail and brighten someone's day. For this video, I'm going to be working again on a postcard size piece of watercolor paper, and anything about that size will work just fine. If you are a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller than four by six, that, that'll still work. And I've taped it down to just a piece of cardboard that I covered with clear packing tape to make it impervious to water. You can find instructions for doing that in one of my other videos, and I've placed the link in the description for this video on YouTube. So the first thing that we need to do is gather our supplies and for this project you're going to want some kind of a coin, you'll want a spray bottle of some sort, and you'll also want some sort of credit card like card. It, it matters for this that the edge be somewhat thick. So an old credit card, I have an old um, National Park Pass that I have cut up and I use a lot for painting with, but you don't have to have it all cut like this. Just uh, any kind of a credit card-like card will work just fine. So an old loyalty card or an old um, identification card of some sort. You'll also need some masking tape um, and I'm going to use a water brush for adding clear water. You could also just use a brush and a separate clear water container. I'm using this just because my space is limited, but if you have one, it's a handy way to add clear water to a painting and know that your brush is clean. Before I get started on my painting, I'm going to activate my colors using my brush like an eyedropper to just bring a couple of drops of water to each of my wells. People often ask, how come your colors look so bright? And this is why. Um, well, the other reason too can be that sometimes things on video look a little different to you than they look to me. I don't know how your monitor is calibrated, so I'm not exactly sure what colors you're seeing, and you should keep in mind that what you're seeing might not be exactly what I'm seeing here in person. But now all of our colors are starting to soften up, and we'll be able to lift our color off a lot more easily, so I always like to start with that process. Now we're going to set up our painting, and I'm going to let my coin be the setting sun. And I am also going to have some water in this painting, and I want to make a horizon line. So I'm going to use a piece of masking tape to set up my horizon line somewhere below. Don't stick it at the halfway point, that's not so great. If you divide your painting in half with anything, half up, half down, half left, half right, half red, half green, whatever it might be, then you set up a tension between two things that are kind of fighting for the viewer, the viewer's primary attention. So we want to make it a little bit below the halfway point so that we don't have a fight between the top part of the painting and the bottom part of the painting. All right, now I'm going to take my spray bottle. Oops, wait, before I do that, it would be smart for me to have my washes ready to go. I always forget this step and that's silly, so don't be silly. So I want this to be a sunset scene. I'm gonna take some yellows and some oranges and mix them up. I wanna make fairly strong color because I'm going to have moisture already on the page. And so my colors will be sort of diluted by 
the spray that I'm going to put on the page. So I want to make some nice strong color over here. And maybe let's have a little bit of a, a pink tone that we can use. All right, so I get my sunset colors mixed and ready. And now I'm going to mist around my coin like I did for the moon in our full moon painting. So I'm just kind of misting in a circle. And then I'm going to pick the coin off the page, oops, preferably without sliding it all around like I just did. But I know you can't see this very well, but what happens is there's a dry spot in the middle. And so that means that whatever color I put around this will sort of crawl around. That's where I dropped my coin, so let's get rid of that little circle. We'll crawl around and towards that circle but I'll be left with this kind of sparkly edge, which is nice for a setting sun. So now as I move outward, I'm just going to leave a little bit of that white sparkle from the spray and add more color as I move away from my sun. And Maybe add a little more pink to it as I get farther away, so it becomes more orangey. And I'm just playing around, you know, it doesn't really matter what pattern I make here. It's a sunset and colors could be all over the place. All sorts of colors in our sunset. And then I'll go right down to that piece of tape. Now, sometimes color will crawl underneath a piece of tape. So what I like to do is as soon as I've wet it all the way down, I'm going to pull that tape off and just discard it. Now, these colors might look fairly bright right now when they're wet, but if you've painted with watercolor before, you'll know that it tends to dry paler um, and softer than it looks when it's wet. So I think I'd like to intensify this color. All of this is still wet. I'm going to float some more color in here, some brighter color. And I'm staying away from that area around the sun because I want that to be the lightest area. That's where the most light is in my sky. So now when I get down to this edge, Instead of trying to paint very carefully along that edge, I don't have to do that now because it's wet all the way down to the edge. So I can put some color here and let gravity and capillary action take care of blending it all the way down to the edge. And I think I want to put some more of that in more intense orange up at the top and maybe some suggestion of little clouds. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is take my water brush, or you can take some clear water and a separate brush, and I'm going to get some water flowing on my water brush, and I'm just going to drop in clear water in a circle around my sun. And then I'm going to kind of rotate my, my paper to allow that to move a little bit. And what that's doing is it's actually creating um, maybe a bloom or maybe just a diluted area, depending on how dry your paper is. And either one is perfectly fine. But that's going to give me a sense of this area is lighter, the glow around the sun. Now, I've got a lot of paint along the side. And as I'm moving this around, I don't want one of those droplets of paint to go streaking across the page. So I think I will take a moment to carefully blot up some of this color that is all the way over on the edge on my tape. And sometimes you have to do that more than once because as you remove some of that moisture, more will slide over into that area. All right. Now we have to let that dry before we do our next step. So the thing to do while you're letting that dry um, is to make another one. Start another postcard. 
So here's one that I had started before, and this one is now dry, so I can show you the next step. But you can do step one on several different postcards and then be all ready to start step two on several different postcards, and they'll all come out a little different, which is great. So now I'm going to add the sparkles in the water down here, and I, again, kind of want to keep my... Um, spray from going over this horizon. So I'll take another piece of tape and stick it down just below the horizon. I'm actually trying to leave what would be like a little white line on the horizon. And the reason for that is once you've gotten the paper wet once, there's a tendency for it to crawl underneath there. So I don't want to go right to the edge. Now I'm gonna take my spray bottle and I'm trying to miss just this area down here. If you need to, you can take something else and cover this up if you feel like your spray bottle sprays all over the place. And I don't wanna get it completely wet. I want to have it be just spattered all over with some wet areas and some dry areas. And now I'm going to take my card and some of my wash colors that I used in my sky and I'll paint those colors right along the edge of the card and then I'm going to stick the card down and make little horizontal lines. The thing about sparkles in water is that especially at the distance at a distance they tend to go along a horizontal and this card helps me get that horizontal line. Now, as I get close, as I'm coming towards myself in the scene, I'm going to put the card down and drag it downward just a little bit, like that. Running out of color, I need some more color here. So I paint it along the edge, I lay the card down, and I sort of drag it towards me. And as you can see, I didn't get my spray even, but that's okay because the sparkles on the water aren't even either. Now, the sparkles happen mostly directly down from the sun. So out here to the side, we'll have darker color. And now this is the one place that I'll kind of paint carefully close to that horizon and I'll meet up with my water that has sparkles in it. It works well to let this water be a little bit more intense color or a little bit darker color than you have in the sky. So again, I'm gonna meet up with where I have my sparkles. And then when I get down to this lower area, I'm going to leave some light down here below the sun. Or if you goof up and paint over it, you can use your, which I did in some of the other ones, use your brush with clear water and drag some clear water through there. So we want our sparkles in the distance, coming in along the line of the light coming towards us, and then we want it to sort of fade in the foreground. And the reason we don't want to bring our sparkles all the way down in the foreground is we want the viewer's attention to be up here, not so much down here. And I'm just going to blot a little color out, a little water out of there because I've got quite a lot. All right, again, I'm going to wipe up some of the moisture along the edge. And there we have our second step where we've got the sun in the sky and the sparkles on the water. Now I left more white over here probably than I want. And if you want to go in and touch that up and bring that in a little bit, you can certainly do that or you can just let it let it be. It's a postcard. So we're not going to go for perfection on every postcard. We're going to go for lots of postcards where we learn a lot and 
make our changes on the next postcard instead of fiddling too much with this one. If you're like most watercolorists, you probably wish you had somebody sitting in your studio snatching the brush away when you're overworking something. So instead of overworking this postcard, let's just move on and do another one. So after I have to let that dry, after that dries, I might have something like this. Now in this one, I decided to drop in some darker colors. I made some sort of grayed purples and put those in to get even more of a glow around the sun and kind of a feeling like uh, if the sun is setting in fog. So you can see, let me bring the others back. Each time I've done my sunset step, I've tried something different. And each time I do my water, I just try to match the colors or use the same colors I used in the sky. So in this one, as I'm looking at it, I'm seeing I've got these two more orange streaks, more reddish orange. Might be nice to put a little bit of that reddish orange in here while it's still wet. But I think mine has already dried past the point where I can do that. So I'm going to not do that on this one and just say, you know what, it's a postcard. So after you've done the first two steps, you'll have something like this. You'll have your setting sun and you'll have your water in the foreground. And now to really bring out the sense of light, it helps to have some sort of a darker object silhouetted in the foreground. And one of the problems that tends to happen as people add a darker object in the foreground is they try to mix or use something that's black or almost black. Because if you look at a photograph, that tends to be what happens. Now, a photograph, cameras are getting better, but typically a photograph will have picked an exposure level that can handle that bright sun and the bright sparkles on the water and also has this other object in the scene. And so the other object often will be completely black. But when your eyes are moving around a scene like that, the iris opens and closes. So if you have a darker object in the scene, you'll actually see some color. So we're going to make our postcards better than a photograph, and we're not going to make them completely black, which doesn't really look natural anyway. We're going to use the colors we were using in our sky and water and make those colors a darker version and we're going to paint our silhouette with that darker version. So the first thing I have to do is mix a darker version of this. And I happen to know that I used my bright azo yellow. I used this orange, which is transparent Perinone orange. And I used this red, which is Quinn Rose. And I used Thalo blue to get the sort of violet tones. So I'm going to bring some Thalo blue in. Now what I get is sort of a muddy looking brown. And you might think, oh, that's kind of an ugly color. And that's fine. Let it be <laughs> kind of an ugly color. You want sort of a brownish tone that picks up the colors that would be in the, in the sky, in the light, you can add a little more violet because the object here will be having light from the sky behind you cast upon it. And that might be a bit of a, of a violet tone behind you. So I'm making kind of a purpley brown, if that makes any sense. So in this first one, what I'm going to do is just some sea grasses. And I want to do that because I want to show you a way that you can make grasses I'm going to test my technique on another piece of paper. I have a really nice start right here. I don't want to try something for the very first time on top of this really nice beginning. So instead, before I try it over there, I'm going to figure out the techniques I'm going to use on a piece of scrap paper. So I'm just taking the back of something that I wasn't happy with and I splay out my brush with my thumb and forefinger. This does not harm your brushes. You don't have to worry about damaging your brushes. And now what I'm going to do is move the brush this way, like grasses grow, not this way, not dragging directly, but with the brush bristles kind of at an angle. So I'm going to go like that. 
And then each time I do this, I want to rotate my wrist a little differently or maybe turn the page so that I get that variation in angles that you see in naturally growing plants. So they're not, so what I want to avoid is this kind of thing where they're all lined up parallel. That doesn't look as natural as if I put them at an, put the brush at an angle and then kind of flick my wrist a bit. And then when I come back to do the next pass, I move it in a slightly different way. All right. So once again, I'm going to splay out my brush and to make sure I have the right amount of moisture, I'll test it over here and see if I like it before I start over here. So we're just going to have some grasses growing up in the corner here. Coming in from off the page. All right, and then I think I will kind of fill a little bit down here in the corner so that I don't have as much light peeking through. Now, this is very distracting, and when you're trying to evaluate whether you like what you've done, it helps a lot to wipe off your tape first and then decide, do you like it? See how much of a difference that makes just not to have that messy stuff down there. So I'm, I like that pretty well. I think that looks pretty good. And now I want to make the seed heads, the grass, the, the grass itself. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to touch just the tip of my brush repeatedly along kind of a line, but not completely connected. So I get the sense of like the seeds that grow along the grass, and then I have that little stalk. Now, that's hard to do with a quick sweeping stroke. So if you happen to have a dip pen, it's often easier if you put some color into your dip pen and then make your stroke with a dip pen. Or if you have a rigger or liner brush, those are intended for making little thin lines, so that's also a little easier to sweep a thinner line. But you can certainly do it as well with a round brush. And the trick is, hold the brush. This is one of the few times I'll hold the brush like a pencil. Put your little finger on the painting or on your table surface to judge your distance so you don't get dramatically closer because if you try to do it freehand you might just make a really fat stroke. So my preference would be to use my dip pen but I can use a variety of different pens. You can also just say I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm afraid that I can't pull that off. So I'm going to put in some grasses with seed some seed heads here. So I'm touching just the tip of my brush kind of pressing it down repeatedly making, and I'll make the stem in a minute. Let's make one over here. And kind of, I want them, I want some variation here. I don't want them all to be at the same angle. I don't want them all to look alike because in the natural world, that's not what happens. You get different, let's put one down here. So the function of this, this is not the main subject. The main subject is the sunset itself. The function of this is to give a little bit of contrast to that bright sun and make it seem brighter by comparison. So now I'm going to add my I'm going to use a dip pen, I think, to add my stems. So I load it with paint, and then I'm gonna just use a quick flick of the hand to make the stems. 
Now that I've done this, I think I want a little bit of darker grass down here to be in shadow. So again, I'm going to splay out my brush. I'm going to check what I'm doing over here. Now this is the same wash I used before, but I'll be layering on top of this previous wash. So we'll get some suggestion of a little bit darker grass in the shadow down at the bottom. Not a lot, just a little bit to help that blend in. And now let's pull the tape off and see what we think. Remember, peel your tape kind of at a 45 degree angle. And if you notice that it's tearing, warm it up with a hairdryer. If you warm up the adhesive, it softens it and you won't be as likely to tear your paper. So there we have it. I'm pretty happy with that postcard and I can write a little note on the back and pop it in the mail and send it off to someone and brighten their day. And I can also take my other starts and try what would happen if I use something else as my silhouette in the foreground. So let's have a look at what happens when we change the silhouette at, to get a different painting from the same basic design. All right, so I'm going to put something different in the foreground of this postcard. And I thought maybe I would put a heron in the foreground, wading in the water. And I just did a quick little sketch. You could trace uh, your subject. All you need is the outline because you're going to fill in the whole silhouette. So anything that you find interesting that you want to put in the foreground, just trace it onto a sheet of copy paper. This is regular old inexpensive copy paper. Flip it over on the back, take a pencil, and scribble over all those lines. So what I'm doing is making my own like very uh, crude version of carbon paper, but you don't want to use actual carbon paper if you have some because it's wax based and it will um, resist the watercolor paint. So I'm scribbling on the back, nice and dark with a regular ordinary pencil. And that will allow me to trace my design onto the page. So I'm going to place this wherever I think I might like my heron to be maybe right about there. And now I'm going to use an office type gel pen or a ballpoint pen, anything that has a nice, I need, I need a hard point, not a felt tip pen, not a pencil will work, but, but a pen usually works better. And what I'm going to do is just trace over my design And if I'm lucky, yes, I don't know how well you can see that, but I can see just fine my pencil lines being transferred onto the page. Let me finish tracing it and I'll hold it up so you can see it a little better. So anytime you are working on a painting and you want to add something and you feel not very confident of your drawing skills you can always draw it on another sheet of paper get it the way you want it and then transfer it onto your page using this method so now i have some guide marks for my heron and I think I'll make my heron and then I'll add some grasses underneath my heron to sort of give him a foreground. So again, I want to use the colors I used in the sky, but a darker uh, grayed version. So I'm going to again, add some of that phthalo blue to bring it towards a brown tone. You can also, if you want to just add something like burnt umber to the colors that you already have out on your palette to make it sort of brown. But I want to stay with these warm tones. So the light that's bouncing around in this scene is going to be orange colored light. And so this figure, no matter what its normal color might be, is going to have a lot of those orange tones in it. So I'm making kind of an orangey brown or a purpley brown 
So it's got that reddish quality to it. And now I'm going to try to use my brush. I want to turn this a little bit. I'm going to try to use the natural marks my brush makes as much as possible. So I'd like that to be a little pointier, but I will come back and deal with that in a minute. I keep telling myself, it's a postcard. Don't belabor it too much. So I'm going to sort of press that down to make the body. Now again, here for the legs, I might want them to be fairly skinny. So I'm going to hold this like a pencil and use my pinky resting on the page to control how much downward pressure I place on the brush. So I've got those kind of knobby knees and then they cross. Now I didn't get the pointiness I would, would like on that beak, but I have to be a little careful because I could wind up with him just growing a beak like a two by four. So I'm going to get it in the ballpark and then I'm going to say enough of that. I like to, after, oops, I like to make a little bit of a darker color and drop it into the center of my object while things are still wet for the sort of darker shadows that tend to be in the center of your object. So I'm going to stop with that. Now he looks a little strange right now because he doesn't have any reflections. So to give him some reflections, I want to wet this area and drop in color wet into wet and let it kind of run. But if I try to just wet this with a brush, I'll probably see the outline of where I wet that area. So what I'm going to do instead is grab my spray bottle. I'm going to cover up my object, whatever it might be, my heron in this case. I'm not touching the page, I'm just cupping my hand over the page, and I'll mist the bottom part of the page. And so now I have water down here. So when I drop in my reflections, they move. And I'm going to stand it up and let everything kind of run down the page. Now, that's not perfect, but I and I could make it more defined if I want to later, but I don't think I want to get in and fuss with it. Again, the more fussing you do, the more likely you are to mess it up. It's a postcard. I'm going to let it be. While that one's drying, let's try another variation on this one. Now, when I did the water in this postcard, some of it crept up into the sky, but no worries because I'm going to put a sailboat there. <laughs> so if I have a problem like that, I try to see is there a way I could just kind of work that in. So I have another little sketch of a sailboat and I'm going to do the same thing I did before, scribble on the back. I only need to scribble where I've drawn lines that I want to transfer. So scribble on the back. Take my office style pen. Now I'm not going to stick the hull right on the horizon line. It doesn't work that way. It would be in front of the horizon line. But I am going to try to make it cross the horizon so that I cover up those boo-boos. So I have to kind of peek underneath. That looks pretty good. All right. And then I'm just going to trace my boat hull. It's a postcard, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm using it to learn, and if it's a dud, then I won't send it to anybody, but if it comes out halfway decent, I will. And if it's a dud, I only invested a few minutes in it, so no big, pro well, no big problem, I'll try another one. All right, so I have my boat traced, and now I'm just going to use, I think mostly these colors I used before because they're pretty similar and I'm going to fill in my silhouette. Just filling it all in. I'm not worrying about any variations that you might normally see because this is a postcard and it's very simple. And besides, when things are against the sun, you don't see a lot of the details. So I'll put my sail and my sail cover in. Now, again, for this um, mast, I could use a, a dip pen. I could use a rigger. 
or I can use my round brush and rest my hand on the page and use my my pinky finger to guide me. But well, <laughs> if I can get it on the page, well, that was terrible. So maybe not quite that fast. Okay, and now that's fatter than I wanted. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, like, okay, well, it's a postcard. Now, one thing that will happen with a boat haul, I, I, sometimes I'm glad when I mess things up like that so you can see you're not the only one. With this boat haul, I'm going to take my um, clear water again. So I'm using my um, water brush. You can use another brush or a clean brush with clear water. And I'm going to drop a little clear water in down here on the lower part of the hull and lift a little of that color out. And that will give the suggestion that some light bounced off the water and up into the hull. And now I'm also going to make some squiggly wet marks on the page and let some of that color bleed down and move right into a reflection. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, making reflections of things that don't exist, but that's okay. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of light here and there at the waterline and then otherwise just the suggestion of a reflection. Now our heron is dry enough that we can put some grasses in the foreground. I'm going to use the same technique I used before. Check that my brush is wet enough. Nope, it's too dry. There we go. And using these same colors, just this time, just a little bit of grass in the foreground, just sort of to establish that this heron is wading close to shore. Now, again, that looks terrible. I know you're probably thinking, oh no, that's just wrecked the whole thing. That's because we've got so much coming off the page onto the tape. So don't freak out. Let's just wipe that off. And I think all we need to do is add a little bit of darker color for the shadow areas. We've got that dark shadow in the heron, so having a little bit more shadowing here in our grasses will help tie the whole thing together. I want a grass, there we go. <laughs> Only one going up towards the heron, I couldn't get it to happen. So this time, instead of cleaning off the tape, we'll just pull it off. See how all that messy stuff just goes away and everything is fine. Is it the best painting I've ever painted? No. Is it perfectly good as a postcard? Sure. I'll mail it off. And honestly, even if you feel like your attempts are pretty crude, people love getting an actual painted postcard in the mail. So go ahead and send it off to somebody and make them happy. So now we have three little postcards, all sunsets with some sparkles on the water and something silhouetted in the foreground. And this allows you to try out different ideas. You get to practice the techniques repeatedly. And you also get to play with how wet do I want the surface? What colors do I want to use? Maybe you want to try some wild colors in the sky like purple and orange or green and turquoise and see if you like that. Does that work for you? And each time you do it, you're practicing the technique. I find this a lot more fun than telling myself I have to practice or do studies. That sounds like work. Making postcards sounds like fun. 
Just want to caution you about one thing. If you're planning to do a large painting, don't shrink the whole painting down and try to do it as a postcard because then you just have to do a lot of tiny little details. Instead, take one or two techniques that you're planning to use and make postcards that'll allow you to practice just those techniques and maybe throw in a little extra to finish it off and keep your postcards simple so that you can focus on the techniques that you're you're trying to learn instead of trying to take a big painting and now make it even harder by painting it tiny. So make postcards, keep them simple, have fun, make lots of them. You'll learn a lot by doing the same technique over and over again. And I hope you enjoy working with this sunset techniques and, and take these sparkles off into other water scenes and make it your own. So happy painting and I'll see you next time.